What is your take on where we are in retail? Are you disappointed by the results so far? With the exception, I guess, of Macy's, you'd have to say. You know, if anyone's surprised by these these results, they haven't been reading the news or, or paying attention. You know, the reality is online's winning. If you have a winning digital platform, you're, you're having good numbers in that area. But, uh, you know, and, and you can see that at Walmart, you could see that um, in in, uh, JC, in Macy's numbers yesterday, they had their, their online started to, to improve a little bit. Um, but the reality is um, the, the big elephant in the room is that Amazon's winning more. Yeah. <laughs> um, so but, <laughs> that's, but, that's my biggest concern here. But Carmel, if that's the lens through which you look at this, does that mean the Walmart numbers were actually quite encouraging? Because although they fell short in the comp sales store comp store sales, they actually did better than people expected on the online. They were 33 percent growth. Well, you know what? I, they, if you look at Walmart. Their floor space in the United States is what they need to be dealing with now. Um, and so they need to start addressing their brick and mortar operations, shutting down stores. They need to make sure that they're turning around what they're, they're doing in those same source uh, areas because um, it'll be a drag on their online offering longer term. Um, I think that the Flipkart deal um, is just a, you know evidence of that. They, they are buying into a market where Amazon's already doing well um, to turn that around in another market while they still have problems at home. Um, they, they have a lot to address here. So um, you know we're, we're long-term investors. Um, I don't think that this is a, a great sign um, that they're, they're turning things around. They have a lot of work to do here in the U.S. Uh, Constance, what what kind of retailer is best uh, equipped to handle $3 gasoline prices? Like when does oh, it start that's to fight? A, that's a trick question. Well, <laughs> I would think that it depends on how much they're going to increase delivery charges, right? And how sensitive the consumer is to that. Hmm. And, and this also depends on what happens with wages. Remember, wages are starting to rise. We're almost at 3% on the employment cost index. We're at about 3% on hourly wages. So if wages rise in line with the rise in gasoline prices, it's actually going to take less of a bite out of retail. Now, one of the analyses that we do is we look at gasoline store sales as a percent of total retail sales. Mm -hmm. And right now, we're at about 8% on that number. When that number gets up to about 12%, so it equates to approximately $375, uh, $4 a gallon, then you start to see it take a bite out of other retail sales. So we're a bit away from that now. Um, so it depends on how fast it gets there and how long it stays there. But that's the threshold where we start to see it taking a bite out of other retail sales. There's the question of this battle going on between bricks and mortar and Amazon or online. But what about the overall pie? How does that look? Uh, how much are consumers spending? What does that tell us about the healthy economy overall? Yeah, and it's interesting because if we look at retail sales, um, which is online sales as a percent of total sales, it's still around 10 percent, right? So, and it's almost at the same number as um, uh, eating and drinking establishments, right? Eating out at restaurants. And uh, so when it crosses that, I think that'll be an interesting threshold. Uh, as far as the overall health of the consumer, it's pretty strong, actually. We're, as I said, we're still starting to see rising wages. Um, if we look at consumer health in terms of consumer credit, um, we're not seeing the consumer get overextended. We're still adding mortgage equity to our homes as older mm -hmm. families pay down their homes. So overall, on a macro basis, it actually looks pretty steady. 